Now we're trying to find Tylenol and Motrin, which I have to take for the next couple of days. I wonder if the vaccine gave me COVID. I wouldn't put it surprised by. So it's been a couple of hours since I got the Johnson Johnson COVID vaccine. Immediately, I had the taste of meadow in my mouth. It's still there. Um, my injection arm is sore, which is understandable. But now we're starting to develop, well, at least I know Artie has a headache and I'm starting to develop a headache. Fingers crossed, that's all that we get, hopefully. Okay, so about midnight. I woke up with chills and like shakes and a stutter. Ran over to urgent care and they gave me stuff to reduce the fever and pain and nausea. Doing much better. I am currently waiting for them to take my thyroid blood work because they don't want to, but I'm not leaving until they do. So Johnson & Johnson may not have been the best one for me. Okay, here's another update. Um, all in all, I feel good. Temperature's the same or stable. A um, little fatigue. Was it worth it? I don't know. I'm on the fence. Um, looking out two to three weeks from now, it might be worth it. But how I feel right now... Uh, I should just say in quarantine <laughs> until we have herd immunity. It was really, really scary. Like, I thought I had a stroke. Like, I literally thought I was having a stroke. So. I thought I was having a stroke. I thought I was going to die, like, all I kept thinking was, is my face drooping? Hi, uh, it is Jamila coming to you with my unpleasant experience with my COVID vaccine. Um, so March 16th, I qualified for um, COVID vaccine based upon my hypothyroidism slash autoimmune disease and I was adamant the only one I wanted to get was the Johnson and Johnson Jensen like that was it one shot and done also through my research I just felt for me it was going to be the safest one mm. so Tuesday April 16th my appointment was at 315 and I should have known not to get this vaccine because one they called me to tell me to bring my health information 
when I clearly stated that I was on like Medi-Cal Medicaid, which is what we have in this area. Number one, number two, and I didn't have my card yet. So they called me in the morning. It's like, make sure you bring it. And I was like, I don't have it, but I do have my numbers. And they told me that's all I needed. And I was like, cool. Number two, I never got the text message that they send to you to pre-check in. So that way, when you get there, they have your name written down and everything. You just check your name, make sure it's right. You're good to go. Number three, I wasn't on the list. And had I not brought my cell phone with me with my confirmation that I have an appointment at this time, at this date, I probably would not have had it. And so I had to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth just to get the little vaccination card. Cool. So I'm back there. The guy who did it was really quick. You can tell he does a lot of vaccines, um, whether they're flu or maybe he does a lot of, I don't know, but he's really good. It's, it was done. I will say the initial prick hurt more than a flu shot, but nothing bad. I just remember like immediately having the taste of metal in my mouth. Like if metal had a taste, like if you've ever smelled metal, that's what it tastes like in my mouth. Waited the 15 minutes, nothing went wrong, great. So we go to my sister's house, we help her put together or start putting together this super complicated barbecue grill. Um, go get video, come home, hook up the video, eat dinner, watch Nightfall on Netflix. So far, everything's good. By the time I'm ready to go to sleep, the only symptoms I have, which are very normal, is soreness at the site of the injection, normal, a slight headache, normal, um, and that's about it. And it tastes of metal in my mouth. Like nothing that would be like, oh, you're going to have a reaction. You're going to be that one person out of millions of people. Go to sleep. And I was about midnight. And I remember it was about midnight because I looked over at Artie's clock. And I woke up because I'm cold. Not like, oh, it's kind of cold. Like, bone chilling cold like in my hypothyroid videos i talked to you guys about how i am freezing cold like i cannot get warm my bones are frozen like that's how i felt and i had went to sleep with just like a t-shirt on and i was like i'm not getting up to go find socks i'm just gonna ball on a ball let my body heat take care of it so um i roll over to my right side and I stay in this ball thinking it'll go away. 10, 15 minutes, my body heat will warm it up, it'll go away. About five minutes, it's not going away, so then I lay on my left side. And by the time I'm laying on my left side, it's no longer like a cold, it's like <laughs> So I stay like that and I remember already saying what's wrong and I'm like, I'm cold and I'm nauseous. Like that's the only two things I could say. And I remember saying them easily. So I wait like another 10 minutes no more than 15 minutes so this all this is happening in 15 minutes span you know between 12 midnight and 12 15. so i'm like something's wrong like i just know something is wrong so i reach for my cell phone i google the nurse line and i speak to the nurse and i remember as i'm telling her my name and my birth date i'm stuttering like like stuttering and at first I thought I was just cold. Um, and she was like, okay, we don't have any nurses available right now. Someone should call you back in 10 to 15 minutes. You're gonna get either a restricted number or a number from Texas, please answer. So get a phone call back. She does the bare basics of verifying who I am, my name and date of birth. That's it, nothing else, no address, nothing. And she goes, is there someone who could speak to you for you right now? And so I just hand the phone over to Artie. He's like, what's going on? I was like, and she gets on the phone with him. And I remember trying to answer the questions because I could kind of hear them. And he was like, just be quiet. I got it, babe. I got it, babe. And then they get off the phone and he's like, we got to take the ER. And I'm like, you know, just shaking and like stuttering. And he was like, I don't know. She says, you just need to go to the ER to make sure you're okay. 
And so he gets dressed, he puts me on sweats, and then we proceed to go. Except we have a little problem. I can't walk. I think I got to the front door and now it's probably took like five minutes. And I was like, I can't, just call an ambulance. And he was like, nope, I got you. Picked me up, threw me over his back, carried me to the car, got me in the car, put my seatbelt on, and we drive about 20 minutes away to Riverside. Um, went to Parkview Hospital. And we park and he goes to get the wheelchair and he's putting me in the wheelchair. There's this nurse who's getting off work or going to lunch. She sees it and she's like, is she having a seizure? And he's like, I don't know. She's just having some type of reaction to the vaccine. So she takes me in. Literally as soon as he said my name and my date of birth, they gave him a piece of paper to fill out and they were pulling me back. And um, this is where I kind of got upset at the whole process. Like, I don't think I've ever had a fever that high. Ever. And I want to say, like, when we got there, they were like, my fever was only a 101. So the shaking. Like, my fever was 101. Um, My blood pressure was up. My heart rate was up and my oxygen was low. And that's all I remember when they were doing the intake on me. Because I don't remember much. But I do remember the shaking. Like I thought I was having a stroke. Like the shaking was so bad. It looked like somebody was having a seizure where they just like. It was uncontrollable. So I already letting them know because I can't speak. Like basic things I cannot get out. Like the basics of things I cannot get out. He's letting them know, hey, she had a vaccine today about 3.30. She was completely fine. And now this is happening. The head doctor comes down and is like, oh, I'm not going to call it. We're just going to treat it as if it's, she's having a reaction to a vaccine. Which could very much so be true. Except for you're not accounting for my health history. And he was like, yeah, just get her some IV, a Tylenol, monitor her. Like, that was his solution. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, no. I remember saying, like, no, 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 something's wrong, something. And, of course, I'm stuttering it out. Like, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. And I was trying to tell him, like, hypothyroidism, gastrointestinal issues, and all this stuff like that. And um, then they pull blood. So they get me back there. They give me Tylenol. They stick an IV in my line, my arm. They pull blood, do nothing with the blood. Like, what's the point of pulling my blood if you're not going to do anything with it? But that's a whole nother story. Um, And then they gave me, let me see. They gave me medication via IV. So they gave me Zofran, which is for my nausea. They gave me an IV for fluids. They gave me Tylenol as a tablet. They gave me two. So it ends up being 650 milligrams. Toradol and Antivan. Now, mind you, I didn't know that they were giving me Zofran. If I had known, I would have told them no, because it knocks me out. And that's probably why I slept most of yesterday. Um, Tramadol knocks me out. Avidan, I haven't had any any adverse to it, so I'm not going to complain about that. But anyways, we're there for maybe about three, four hours before they say you can be discharged. By then, I can talk. Like my stutter's gone. Um, I still have a fever. I'm still really weak, but the stuttering is gone. So my nurse comes in and I said, did he pull blood for my thyroid? And she's like, no, you don't need to. We just treated you as if you had an adverse reaction to a vaccine. And so I told her, I was like, I couldn't talk to you beforehand, but I have hypothyroidism. Um, I was just diagnosed with it. Some of the symptoms that I experienced are also symptoms that I have with my hypothyroidism, check thyroid level. And she goes back. So she speaks to the doctor. The doctor says he doesn't feel like he needs to. And I said, well, I need to speak to the doctor. So the doctor comes back and I can tell him like, look, I am messed up right now. Um, My thyroid isn't right. I believe my reaction that I had was because of my thyroid. And I really need for you guys to do a complete thyroid, TSH, T4, 
T3 and the antibodies. One, I need to know that at that moment in time in my life, they're on point or in a range that should be on point, especially since I'm taking medication. So he agreed, um, but he said like, it would take like three days before I got the response. So I should get them back by tomorrow. But it was just really frustrating. And then like, I remember telling them like, they said only take Tylenol after I had the vaccine. And they gave me a prescription for Motrin. Like clearly, when I got the injections, they said no Motrin, no Advil, only Tylenol. So you give me a prescription for Motrin. So we ended up going to our local like 24 hour Walgreens and I got the prescription filled. It's 800 milligram of Motrin. You'll use it, it's Motrin. Um, but we ended up picking up um, Tylenol as well. Um, so that was Tuesday through Wednesday. Wednesday morning, I woke up with a fever. So of course I was monitoring my fever. Every time I would wake up, I'd take it temperature. I did take one, no, I took two Tylenols yesterday. And other than that, I've just been trying to drink fluids because it's really important. Um, today I have nausea, which I'm so used to that I can deal with it. Like even like that need to fill the throw up, like I live with it. So it's not bad. It's there, but it's not bad. No headache. Um, I do, I am drinking fluids. It's on my Gatorade here. And water, because I can't drink Gatorade straight. The only side effect that I have now is that my injection side, I don't know if you can see it. Just barely, like you can see, it's like super red and puffy. And it is very, very tender. And if I were like touch it, you can actually feel, <laughs> it sounds so gross. You can feel like the vaccine. I don't know what it is. It's just, there's a bump there. I want to say what people are saying on like the internet, but I don't want this video flagged and removed because it is a valid reaction. Um, and I wish that they did more studies with people who have like chronic conditions, not just diabetes or heart disease, but people who have different types of autoimmune diseases, like the whole gamut to see how these vaccines affect you because someone with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism might not be able to get this vaccine. Um, or I could just be the weirdo who got it and had a reaction. There's, there's not a lot on the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Um, even the, um, pharmacist who gave me the injection, he was like, yeah, hardly, he goes, I haven't had anybody have a reaction. I'm your number one. So, but that's it. Um, looking back, would I do it again? Maybe. I'm not an anti-vax vixer. Like, by all means, your body is your body. Do whatever it is that you want to do. But I, for me, I wish I would have waited until I had an opportunity to speak to my physician. And I'm not even supposed to have insurance with her until like May 1st. So I could talk to her about her thoughts. I know she wanted me to get it done. Maybe if I would have waited a little longer, there could have been someone else who had a reaction that has similar health conditions that I do. And I may have paused. But now that it's done, I just feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing for humanity. Like in two weeks time, so we're looking at about April the 20th, I should have enough antibodies where I'm fully vaccinated, which means I can't get it. And I'll continue to wear my mask so that I don't spread it to you. So, because the sooner everybody gets antibodies, the sooner we can go back to normal. Because this girl, she needs a brunch. A real brunch. So if you have been vaccinated for the COVID virus, if you've been vaccinated for the COVID virus, Comment down below if you have had any symptoms from your vaccine, whether it's the mild stuff or the extreme stuff that I just told you right now. Uh, if you're comfortable, you can let people know which type of vaccine you had. Um, again, I had the Johnson & Johnson, supposedly a safe one. 
buddy, you are not safe to me. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell so you're notified. When the video is all said and done, share, 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 share. And of course, leave a comment below. Uh, thank you for watching, sharing, subscribing, hitting the notification bell. Um, I really do appreciate it and we'll see you on our next video.